Hello everyone and welcome back to my studio, The Pottery Corner, down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Today we are doing part two of the hydrangea head make. Uh, this is a hand building project using porcelain. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, which is preparation where I go through the equipment that you're going to need to make this project then have a look at part one I'll pop a link up on the screen at the end of this video if you haven't seen it uh, so we're going to today start the hand building of the hydrangea heads so let's dive in and get on with it I know you're all excited to get going on this one so in part one um, I go into the pack that's available in my Etsy shop for you to make this project there's hydrangea flower head cutters, the um, glass frit that I shall be using and a template. So we're starting with a slab. So I'm just rolling the porcelain out using my guides. Now these guides are thin ones. And in fact, I am going to roll down to the guides and then make the slab thinner than the guides. So this does need to be quite thin. So now I'm just going to freehand it a bit, trying to keep it even, but taking it down lower than the guides. And the guides are five millimeter, so I'm now going lower than five millimeters. As I say, I'm just trying to make sure that I keep it even as much as I can without using guides. I don't want it to be quite that thick. So I'm just going to just take it down a little bit. Right, OK, so I've got it more or less where I want it. There's an air bubble there. Um, so I'm just going to now compact my porcelain by using a rubber kidney in the normal way. I'm just going to smooth over that surface just to make sure that that porcelain is compacted. That will also thin it a little bit more. Right, okay, so I'm happy with that. So I've got my um, template. So I'm going to place my template on here, cut round it. Um, and I'm going to cut out three heads and then I'm going to leave a portion of the slab to use for the um, stems that we're going to put on them to put them onto a cane. Right, so I've cut out my three circles. I'm just going to lift them very carefully. Porcelain uh, is very plastic um, and if you haven't used it before it, uh, it really does work in a different way to other clays. So I'm just going to very carefully lift this off of the cloth. Okay, so as you can see it's a little bit rough around the edges but I'm not too worried about that. Just pinch that bit off. It's still quite thick so this is probably at least five mil. So on the edge, I'm going to just pinch it down so that it is thinner. I don't want it to be that thick. So I'm just going to pinch this edge all the way around, being careful with my slab, which as you can see is flopping all over the place because it's porcelain. So just be a little bit more respectful of it, otherwise you'll pull it out of shape. Um, so I'm just going to pinch all the way around this will elongate the um, circle a little bit, which yeah, is fine. Blocks. So um, we have our plastic bowl, we have our swimming costume booby, and I'm going to put the slab into the booby without trying to wrinkle it. So I want to try not to have any wrinkles in this at all around the edge. In other words, I don't want it fluted. I don't want this wrinkling here. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time flattening that out and making sure that it doesn't wrinkle on the edges. Right, okay, so it's actually, it's in. There isn't any wrinkling on this edge. It's um, come out of shape a little bit, as you can probably see, but we'll be trimming that later, so I'm not worried about it. At the moment, all I want is it to be the right shape for it to sit and set up. So I'm actually quite happy that that is the shape that I'm going for. So the booby is forming that dome shape um, and it's supporting the porcelain actually in the bowl. So that's now ready um, to just leave and let it set up for a little while. So I'm going to go and do the other two. I am spending just a little bit of time each time making sure that the dome 
shape that I'm looking for is there. So I'm just making sure that the porcelain is down in the bowl where I want it to be. I'm not worrying too much about the rim, although I don't want any flutes in it. So if it's fluted, I'm just um, trying to straighten it's it out. Later. Right, so we've got our three um, bowls done and setting. Now I'm going to make this part of the um, stem. If you're going to be making yours into obviously a, a pot lid or something, you won't need to do this stage. Um, but I like to put them out in the garden. I think they look very pretty when they're outside and they stand on um, a, a, a metal cane that I then put into my um, flower containers on the deck outside the house. Uh, now, when you're making your stem, it needs obviously to be big enough to go onto whatever you're going to put it onto. Um, and it needs to be tall enough that it will stand in the kiln without the flowers touching the kiln shelf. So you're actually using this as, as its own kiln prop inside the kiln. So it's quite important to make sure that this is long enough and comes past uh, the actual flower heads when it goes into the kiln. So I form do it. Um, and I'm going to use this, the end of um, one of my hole makers to form the um, stem around. I'm just going to use a little bit of talcum powder because this um, porcelain is very floppy. And I'm just gonna fold that round there, fold that over the top so I can see where it joins and then cut that bit there. I don't need that, that's the spare bit. And then I can slip, score and slip this section here. Um, yes, porcelain joining together. Normally I would say, give it a really good scratch and sniff. And you'll all have heard me say it many times before, this is your glue, so don't be shy with it. But in terms of joining porcelain together, it's even more important because porcelain does not like joining. So I'm just going to roll that over so I get a nice join on there. And then on top of there, I really am belt and braces, I'm going to put this piece of tiny, tiny coil. And again, I'm going to overemphasize the point, please make sure that you score and slip each addition because it will come apart otherwise um, and then I'm just going to pop that little coil just on top of there on that join line and uh, we'll give it a little smooth with the rubber kidney just to make it pretty. Um, you're not going to see it because it's going to be underneath, but we still need to make it pretty, don't we? Right, I'm going to give that a minute to dry before I try and take that off of there, um, just so that it's uh, not quite as wet as it is now. And then um, I'm going to fashion the other two. So um, I'll see you in a mo. Okay, so I've made my um, little stalks. I've actually made five because um, I need to work out how long they need to be. So I have made some longer ones. This one is um, six centimetres. Um, I can cut them down, but I don't want them to be too short. So what I'm left with at the moment are my, my three dome tops and my stalks, which are ready to attach. Um, and now I'm going to just let those sit and set up because they're much too wet to play with at the moment. And um, we're going to carry on with cutting out some flowers. They are fiddly. You'll be cursing me when you're making this. Um, in terms of number, you probably need at least 50 different sized flowers for each head. So you are going to be spending some time doing this. Try and make them as neat as you can. There is a knack to this. I find painting the cornstarch or talcum powder onto the mould first. Make sure you have some talc on your clay. 
press lift and then you'll find that it will release much more easily. But just pop them in the box um, and later on we will close the box up so that we keep them damp. You're best to uh, talc your cutter each time and if it won't release just help it along by just flicking it with your knife and then it will pop out. There we go. I tend to make more of the smaller sizes and just tend to make um, enough of the larger ones to use around the base. So I'm going to spend the next hour or two cutting out more uh, porcelain flower petals um, I'm going to leave the uh, the bodies and the stalks just to set up for a little while and we'll come back and put them together uh, in the next bit. So I've made myself a bundle of um, flower petals um, and I've popped them in this box so that they're, they're all together and I've done some of each size but not very many big ones. Um, so I've left the um, domes to dry overnight um, and they're now sufficiently dry for me to get them out of their bowls. So when they come out, what I don't want is I don't want it flopping around. Um, and this is still malleable, so I guess you would call it leather hard. Um, and I'm just going to reform this rim just a little bit um, so that it's not quite so fluted. So I just want it to be dome shape, okay? So I'm not really too worried about the edge. Um, this is a little bit rough. Um, I might trim this one before I use it. So I'm just going to check uh, the other two. Although you can't really see it underneath, I don't really want a cut edge um, underneath my piece. Right, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to um, keep it in the bowl for the time being because um, we're now going to attach the stalks. As I said before, I've made myself more stalks than I need because um, I can then choose which one's going to go where. So when you decide how tall your stalk needs to be, remember that you need to have the stalk protruding from this edge of the uh, dome. So I'm just going to use this one on this one. I'll move those out of the way. I have just let those um, harden up to leather hard because it's very difficult to use porcelain when it's very floppy. Um, so that's my edge that's going to stand and this is going to be my joining edge. So I'm going to pop that into the centre of my dome. Just mark where it sits. You can kind of see where it sits, but I'll mark it for your benefit. And then I'm going to scratch this surface inside the dome. Give it a really, really good scratch as normal. Don't be shy with your scoring. As I said earlier, um, porcelain is an absolute devil when it comes to putting pieces together. And indeed, um, one of these has got a nice crack in it where... Uh, it hasn't joined yet. So this one that I've thrown, you can see there's a crack round there, despite my best efforts at joining it together. So uh, it does crack very easily. Uh, and then again on my top section, I'm just going to very carefully trim that so that it's straight. So it's not quite straight. And again, I'm going to score the top of the stalk, give it a really good rough up. With my knife, you could use a serrated kidney for this. I prefer to score with a knife. It's just a personal preference. Okay, so that's nicely roughed up. This is my um, porcelain slip. So I'm going to apply a nice decent dollop onto there. And a nice decent dollop onto there. Make sure there's enough of it. Chorus with me, don't be shy. Okay, and then I'm going to put one on top of the other and give it a wiggle. So I want to make sure that that is actually attached there. And then I need to just grab myself a piece of uh, porcelain out of the bucket and make myself some joining coils. So I'm going to put a coil around the outside 
and I'm just for belt and braces just going to rough up that joining place on both the stalk and the dome because I want to give this as good a chance as any of not falling off so you're probably thinking she's being over pedantic um, about this and you know really labouring the point but there is a reason for labouring the point if you don't do it it'll fall off so I'm going to give that more slip kind of have to do a hundred percent more than you would normally do um, just because it's porcelain so don't say I didn't warn you if yours falls off right let's pop that on there and then I've just got a simple modelling tool and I'm going to press this coil first actually onto the side of this piece both onto the dome and onto the stalk so it's kind of pressed right right the way across that join right and now I'm going to endeavour to get a coil on the inside not so easy obviously because it's down in this stalk but I am actually going to just try and get this this very very thin piece of coil into there kind of judge how much I'm going to need and then pop it down not easy but necessary so I'm going to just pop that in there down you go do my best to use the modeling tool to get that down onto that join line and then I'm going to spend a couple of seconds just making that slightly prettier again as I've said you're not going to be looking at it but it still has to be pretty especially if you're going to sell it um, it just shows that you've uh, taken time with your work if you finish off nicely okay so that's now on right at this stage we can't really do any more other than ensure that your rim is where you want it to be so I'm just going to pinch that make sure it's um, relatively smooth um, and then this just needs to sit for a minute and um, I'm going to do the other two and then I'll come back to you so that's the second one done whilst I've got them upside down like this I'm going to put my makers mark on um, because it's much more difficult to put your Maker's Mark on when it is decorated so you don't really want to be moving it at that stage so I'm just going to put my Maker's Mark on and um, and then we'll start the exciting part right so there we are uh, three done three stalks on I've just checked the rims and made sure the stalks are straight um, and now I'm going to use my tin so I was saying on the preparation video that I use these tins um, and then basically what I do is very carefully at this stage remembering that the stalk is very wet uh, transfer them onto this tin so there we are that's how it goes so the stalk is inside the tin and the tin is just supporting the dome and then I can fiddle a little bit with the shape if I wish to um, so I'm just going to flick these onto the tins so as I'm only going to be working on one head at the moment, I'm going to put the others into plastic so they don't dry too much. Um, and I find the easiest way to do that is to actually put the whole tin, the whole lot. So if you find yourself halfway through, um, if you have a bag and just put the whole tin in a bag. Right, so I've had a quick tidy up and I've got out a serrated kidney and um, I use this uh, paintbrush which hasn't got an end on it so it was a paintbrush in a former life uh, and now it is just uh, um, this little sort of circle uh, on the end here sometimes I will use um, chopsticks they're very good for the same thing one just happens to be the right size for what I need it for okay so we've got our porcelain dome with its stalk inside the tin so it's nicely balanced in there um, and I'm going to start from the top so I'm working from the top down to the bottom and I've popped it on a whirler because it just makes my life easier um, to be able to move it around and I've got my flowers in the box so I'm ready to go so here we go uh, I'm going to give this dome a really really good scratch 
so I'm actually going to do the whole section because once I start putting the flowers on I'm not going to be able to use a serrated kidney near the flowers because it's going to damage them so I'm actually going to give this a really good score right across the whole of the dome right so I'm happy with that um, I'm just going to adjust slightly the shape um, from the scratching obviously it's got pulled out of shape a little uh, bit right okay so nice. we have popped our scratching on and now I'm just going to slip each section as I go so I'm going to do this top section first and I'm going to put a nice layer of slip on there and then I'm going to start with the smallest flowers. Okay, so I'm grading the flowers down. You can do it whichever way you want to do it. Um, I'm going to scratch the back section of this flower really, really carefully. Just be careful with them, they're quite fragile. But I do need to make sure that there is a good scoring bit on there. And then I'm going to pop it onto my dome and then I'm going to use the paintbrush without the end on to push the flower onto there and give it a wiggle. So that bit where the scoring was has now been attached. So I'm just going to make sure that it's had a wiggle, but I haven't pushed the paintbrush through the flower. I hope you can kind of get that. But the bit that's attached in the middle of the flower that was scored underneath has actually touched the slip and been pushed onto the slip. Now I'm going to take another flower and do the same. So I'm going to score this central section here. So that's nicely roughed. When I put this one on, I want to just make sure that it's at a different, going a different way. So I don't want to end up with lines of flowers going round. So I'm going to turn this one um, the other way. There's just a little bit of clay there that I don't want. Sometimes when it comes out of the cutter they leave these little pieces so you can just flick them off if you don't want them there. Uh, so this time I'm going to just gently lift up the petals of this one and put this one the opposite way round so that its petals kind of go up in a different direction. And again, I'm going to use my paintbrush to push into that centre there and give it a wiggle onto that slip. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time fiddling with the petals at this stage because once all the flowers are on, I am going to sort of spend a bit of time making it look pretty. But what I am already thinking is where the glass is going to go. You have to make pockets for the glass to sit in, otherwise it literally will run everywhere. So I am at this stage just thinking where the glass is going to go. So when I start building round from here, I'm going to be thinking about where the glass is going to flow. So I'm just going to carry on placing them on and I'll come back to you when I've got a few more on so that you can see where I'm where I'm going with it. OK, so we've got sort of half a dozen flowers started on here. Um, I'm now going to uh, introduce some of the larger flowers as I go down. So in this very top section where the slip is already on, I'll carry on with the smaller flowers. And then I'm going to start using the medium flowers with the smaller flowers in between um, until I've got right the way down to the bottom. OK, so as you can see, I've just introduced some of the sort of slightly larger flowers, the medium sized ones, in with the smaller flowers as I go round. So I'm just going to carry on um, popping these on. It does take a little while um, and then we'll come back to it when I've got down to the bottom row. So I've carried on uh, just popping each flower on individually. Um, and as you can see, I've use the medium sized flowers and the small flowers and then further down um, on the sort of the lower edge on this side I've used the bigger flowers. Um, I am being careful with this because obviously each time you add slip to it it gets a little bit wetter um, so I am just trying to be a little bit delicate with it. Um, 
as I said earlier, I am watching that I have places for the glass to sit. Um, so when I'm putting the flowers on, um, I'm just being aware of little cups and places that the the glass will stay. If there aren't enough cups and bits and pieces, then all the glass is just going to flow off completely. So um, I have spent a little bit of time just tweaking it. Um, and I'm just going to carry on doing this section here um, with the rest of the flowers. Um, as usual, you always underestimate how many flowers you're going to need. Um, so I have made some more. And they do take a lot of time to make. So um, this is not a short short project so I'm just going to carry on and speed the camera up for you so that you can see my choices when I'm putting things on as we get further further down I am choosing the larger um, flowers and also cutting them so that I've got no um, dome left showing and tucking tucking these pieces up onto um, the dome where you can see it okay so and then obviously putting them on in the same way by scoring using my paintbrush end and then I'm just pulling out these bottom ones um, and I'll show you why in a minute um, but I'll carry on putting them on and then when I've got to the end I'm going to move the camera so that you can see how it stands Right, so I've got them all on now um, and I'm just going to uh, move the camera so that you can see um, when I take it off of the of the tin that you can see that it will stand again I am being careful because this is quite soft move the tin out of the way um, I'm just going to pop it onto the whirler on its stalk um, and I'll take you down and you can have a look at it from a different angle. Right, so it's on the whirler, as you can see. And if I just turn it very slowly, you can't see any of the dome edge. It's underneath the flowers. I don't want to be able to see any of this edge. There's a tiny bit there. I put my finger on it. Um, but I'm not sure that you'd actually see that. But I'm just going to bend that petal down to cover it. Um, and I'm just being careful to make sure that all of that that I don't want to see has been covered. Um, and at this point, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time just checking the positioning of the petals. Um, and as I say, I'm making sure that there are places where the glass can actually sit and hold. So right across this head, I have been careful to make sure that there are places that the glass can sit. I'm now going to put this back into the tin and, and it will dry on the shelf downstairs. As you can see, the um, petals are away from the stalk. They are not touching the whirler, which means that when it's glazed, it's not going to touch the kiln shelves. Um, so that's quite important. And I'm just gonna pop it back into the tin um, and let it dry on the drying shelf downstairs until it's completely dry and then it can go in for bisque firing. So that's one hydrangea head done, one way of doing it. Um, as I said earlier, there are also, uh, these are called mop head hydrangeas where they have um, the little bits on them and I've printed off a few pictures just so that you can see what I'm talking about. So these are called mop head hydrangeas and they have these little bobbly bits in the middle of the flowers rather than being flowered all over 
So um, I also make those um, and almost in an identical way. So I've just made, um, I've used a different hydrangea cutter for these. Um, and then I've made myself a little pile of little balls. Um, and I'll show you how I attach them, get started on the on the second head and then uh, you'll get the idea and uh, and then uh, I can show you how to do that. So I'm going to score as I did before uh, right the way across the uh, the dome making sure I have given it a really good rough up. This is still quite soft despite the fact that it's been wrapped in plastic so I am having to be just a little bit careful that I don't completely uh, knock it out of shape. But I do want to make sure that it's got lots of lovely scoring. Okay. Right, so to start our mop head, I'm going to pop a nice dollop of slip right the way across the whole of the centre. We'll see how far we get. There's quite a lot of balls. Um, so I'm just going to take the balls and press them on. Um, I'm not worrying too much about them being fixed at this point because I am going to fix them on. But I'll just pop them on so that they are all next to each other. I have purposefully made different sized balls so they don't all look the same. Those on the top. And again, I'm going to sort of start planning where my edge is going to be in terms of where I want them to to stop and again I don't want them to be in a in a regular shape so I'm just working out where I want them to be at this point okay so I'm quite happy with those and again I'm going to use this is a, another chopstick with a, a slightly smaller point on it and I'm going to attach each of these um, buds to the piece by pressing quite hard on each of the balls to make sure that they are not floating on that slip. Okay, so I'm just going to go around and make sure that each one is attached by pressing them onto the slip. And that obviously makes a, a little hole at the top, which again is useful because it will hold the glass. So if you look on this one, the head's quite well covered with glass here because the glass has somewhere to go in the little holes. Right, so that's all of those um, attached, as you can see. Um, I'm now going to start adding my flowers around the edge of those and obviously I can overlap the um, flowers on the little bud bits so I can uh, I can go over the top of the uh, of the buds and again I'm going to use the same technique of scoring the back of the flower working out where I want to put it and attaching it this time uh, you'll see that there is actually a centre on the, this particular flower that I'm using from this cutter set. So I'm just going to press the four petals in a star shape round that centre rather than pressing in the centre. So I'm just doing it very slightly differently and again I need to make sure that I'm leaving pods for the glass to sit in. So I'm just going to carry on doing those. Again these flowers are graded so I'm using the smaller flowers at the top and working my way down to sort of larger flowers as it goes down and making sure that I'm not putting the flowers on in lines. So I'm not getting a uniform line around the head. So I'll speed the camera up so that you can see me doing this in super quick time. Right, so 
that's the first row on. I've just um, flattened the actual petals at the top a little bit on this one because obviously they're going to be quite vulnerable if they're stuck up too high. Um, but I'm again thinking about where the glass is going to pull. So it'll it'll pull in that little pocket there. It will pull in that little pocket there. So I'm just being careful to make sure that there are spaces for the glass to sit. So I'm going to carry on putting the different um, uh, size petals on here right the way down as we did before on the other one. And uh, I'll come back to you when I get to the end. Okay, so that's that one done. Um, again, I've been careful to make sure that the petals at the bottom are not touching the shelf and that they come out in a fan shape and I've made space for the glass. So that's the other option to do it as a sort of a mop head or lace uh, cap hydrangea head. So I've got the third one to do and then they'll be ready to go down for bisque firing. So I hope you've really enjoyed following along with this make. It is a long one and it is an involved one and it's not something that you can do in five minutes. Uh, it does take quite a long time to make the flowers and attach them. Um, but I hope that you'll uh, follow along. Uh, this is the end of part two. Uh, there will be a part three once these have dried and been through the bisque firing. I will go through how I actually decorate them with glaze and the glass frit. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for joining me. I hope to see you all on part three. And uh, I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.